Hey guys, I hope you're having a great week. Welcome to Home Groups. Tonight we're discussing John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. It's a fascinating story. In fact, the first miracle, the first sign, the first wonder that Jesus performed in his earthly ministry. And it is, uh, at first glance, we might think that's kind of an odd miracle to start with. That's kind of an odd story. I mean, it doesn't really help anybody. It just kind of helps people at a wedding feast continue to have a party. What's the big deal about that? But there's so much theology packed into that short story. There's so much Old Testament anticipation of what God has promised for ages and ages is finally breaking into our lives. The Messianic age is arriving. And just like the prophet said, the mountains are dripping with sweet wine. The coming of Jesus begins with this act of Jesus. I think to to launch the ministry, to launch the Messianic age, the age when all things are made new, when life swallows up death, when tears are wiped away once and for all. That's what Jesus is doing. And he begins with this ministry. And so as you thought through that this, this morning, we, we covered a couple of ideas that his this act reveals the glory of Jesus ushering in the Messianic age. But then we talked about how the benefits of this Messianic age they have begun, and we're experiencing them in part, but there's still an, a not-yet component to that because the world is still full of suffering and still full of pain and sorrow and sin and sickness and death. Why are all those things still here if Jesus has come and made all things new? Well, He's making all things new. And so we talked about how the benefits of the Messianic age are beginning to be experienced, but they're not consummated in full. Then we talked about how to enter into that messianic age. How do you participate in that? How do you become a member of the kingdom community? It's not by birth, not by physical birth anyway, not by family lineage, not by human acts or religious traditions. No, it's only through faith in Jesus Christ. And, all, and finally, we, we discussed how empty religious activity is surpassed by glorious relationship with Jesus Christ. The empty traditions that we do, that we think connect us to God, but really don't make us feel any more connected to God, they don't work because they're not what the Bible is calling us to. The Bible is calling us to look to Jesus, to cry out to Jesus, to know Jesus, because in knowing Jesus, there is life. So as you think about that text and what all of that means and what we talked about on Sunday morning, Ask these questions tonight. Number one, why do you think religion today feels so pointless and empty? Why does religious activity feel purposeless? Like it, it doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't make us feel connected to God. It doesn't, it, it just seems like we're going through the motions all the time. Why is that? Number two, how does this passage today, this text in John 2, how did it help you reconnect with Christ? How did it help you understand the distinction between relationship with Jesus and just empty religious activity? Number three, what benefits have you experienced because of the Messianic age being upon us? What has God done in your life? How in the world, how has he made your world new? How has he refreshed and restored and healed and recuperated you? In what ways has he changed you? In what ways are you experiencing the benefits of this kingdom? And finally, what are you most looking forward to? When Jesus makes everything new, what is it you're looking forward to the most? I hope that provides some good discussion. I hope you have a great time at home group. May God bless your fellowship.